Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for dropping in and um, sharing practice, sharing community, and today I, where did I even see this? Somewhere on the internet, uh, a little video of, okay, someone had two tuning forks. So if you don't know a tuning fork, it's kind of a double pronged metal rod. It's, it's, they have different frequencies. And um, if you hit the tuning fork, it creates a vibration that um, you can use for tuning instruments and lots of other things. So this person is making a little video. They have two tuning forks. And one of them, it has a like a little ball hanging from a string thread um, that's just lightly touching the other tuning fork, which is mounted on a piece of wood. So they're not holding that one, it's stable. And there's just this ball hanging and lightly touching the side of one of the forks. And then the person takes another tuning fork that they're holding in their hand and they're hitting it with a mallet, like quite close to the other one, ringing it, ringing it, and we don't see anything happening. You can just, they're just, you can hear the sound and they're hitting it a few times, um, nothing's happening. They put that one down and pick up another tuning fork, and this one is of the same frequency as the one that's mounted on the wood uh, and has the ball resting beside it. And they hit that one once and you see the ball move. <laughs> and they hit it like three times, a little bit louder. It's building a bit more frequency and the ball is really starting to vibrate. Because of the resonance, the vibration, even though it's not touching that tuning fork, the vibrations from it are affecting that one to such an extent that the ball is being affected. And uh, this made me think of our Brahma Vihara practices. These are meditation practices. These are ways of being in the world. These are not just meditation practices. These are hmm, heart intentions. We use a practice to cultivate skillfulness with them. And their ways of, of being in relationship with ourselves and the world and all beings. Um, one of these practices is called mudita in Pali. Pali is the language the teachings from the Buddha were written down in. And mudita is often translated into English as sympathetic joy which is a confusing translation, I think, <laughs> because sympathetic, we often think of sympathy, like feeling badly for something that's happened, or it, it's a little confusing. So my teachers taught me that uh, sympathetic here means sympathetic, like a symphony, like resonant, it's a harmonic, it's sometimes called a harmonic mm, joy in that particular practice. And it's where mm, we cultivate these heart intentions to be skillful. And in that particular case with Mudita, to um, connect with and cultivate joy and in particular it's a practice about the joy of others that when other people are experiencing something wonderful in their life something some good news is happening sometimes our first instinct i certainly have this is a little bit of envy a little bit of like oh that's nice <laughs> You won the lottery, Kim. That's so great. <laughs> I 
there, you know, we can feel a sense of like, especially if somebody already has what we perceive as having a lot and we're like, wow, great. <laughs> you can hear it in the voice. It's like, hmm. And uh, so really this practice, mudita, is about that contraction of our heart and um, about cultivating the intention and the wisdom that there's there's not it's countering scarcity it's countering envy and uh, cultivating oh my gosh that's so beautiful I'm so happy for you like really genuinely I hope that that continues to grow for you um and in this way we're cultivating a heart that's resonant with the joy of others. And I would say that metta practice, loving kindness practice, and karuna, compassion practice, um, are also resonant heart practices. Where So karuna is a compassion practice where the opposite of joy, where we're in contact with somebody who is experiencing suffering of some sort and the heart resonates with that wishing may your suffering ease may it end may you have um be kind with yourself through this difficulty and we um allow that to touch us and we cultivate wishes in relationship with others the word wishes is also different, difficult. It's not just like a wish. It's a, I think of it like a seed that um, we want that to water that and let it grow and let it flourish. These skillful, heartful qualities. Um, and different, different thoughts were coming up around resonance. Like when you, you know, we use these words like, um, yeah, even, a, uh, you know, they have a good vibe, we might say about someone, good vibration, or a bad vibe, we walk into a place of like, whoa, bad vibe, <laughs> or like, I didn't get a good vibe there. Um, or I really resonate with them is another thing we might say, you know, you, you just feel a real resonance a connection a, mm, a harmonic connection in some way so i think that this is something that we've all experienced and um so i did a i didn't have a lot of time to really uh dig as deeply as i would have liked but there's um an organization called the Heart Math Institute. Um, and I'll put the link yeah, under in this YouTube recording and I'll share it here. The Heart Math Institute, a nonprofit organization. Um, I wasn't able to research, like to read their scientific studies that they've done, or so I'm not able to really speak to it. You know, there may be other opinions I wasn't able to dig into it but their research their their intention and hypothesis and what they're working to um, study and show is about this kind of resonance of um, the heart and in the teachings of the Buddha, this is called citta, heart-mind, C-I-T-T-A, that uh, this area of the body is considered the seat of the uh, awake heart or the mm, compassionate mind. So, you know, it's not just like the brain organ. And so the, this, um, some of the things that from this Heart Mind Institute, um, they said, physiologically, the heart sends more information through the nervous system to the brain 
then the brain sends to the heart. Like we tend to think like the brain is like the almighty powerful organ, the great ruler. And uh, their, their studies show that the heart is sending way more um, information rather than the other way around. And the qualities of the signals sent to the brain have, an, have a profound effect on brain function. So what we cultivate, our intention and our practices and how we are in the world, how we speak and act, have an effect on the mind, which will have an effect on how we act in the world. Do we tend to just be so top down in that's a sweeping statement we tend to be, but our um, dominant Western capitalist culture is uh, very brain worshiping. Um, here's some other little tidbits here that I find interesting. The heart's electrical field is about 60 times greater in amplitude than the electrical activity generated by the brain. 60 times greater. And the heart is more than 100 times greater in strength than the field generated by the, the brain. So it's, it's larger and stronger. Um, and it can be detected in a radius all around the body um, up to three feet away in all directions. Um, so this, this um, magnetic field of the heart not only envelops every cell of the body, but also extends in all directions into the space around us. Um, and we may find that as the, <laughs> as the science improves and as the uh, the tools that are they're using to detect become subtler that um, it's much greater than feet three feet in distance um, yeah we've performed several studies that show that the magnetic signals generated by the heart have the capacity to affect individuals around us and um, you can read a lot more about it and they show the different wavelengths there's one sweet one of a, a boy and his dog and they you, they have both of their heart rhythms um magnetic rhythms on this chart and uh when when they're in separate rooms how they are and then when they come into the same room together and the boy you know they're communicating love to each other and how their heart rates uh, synchronize and then they're separated again and you can yeah there's stuff like that on there which I think is beautiful and I think it's true as well <laughs> and uh, the Buddha didn't use this language uh, as far as I know but I to me it resonates it, it's um synchronizes with the teachings of the Dharma and how the Eightfold Path, the Middle Path, the way to the ending of suffering includes cultivating wise intention of non-harm, non-ill will, and renunciation, and includes a skillful speech and um, actions, etc., so it's it's there in the path that how what we're cultivating has an effect. And it's certainly there in the these Brahma Vihara practices. Brahma Vihara means literally the divine abode of the heart, the divine abode, the the um hmm, yeah, best way I can think of to say it right now. Yeah. 
So I was just seeing if there's anything else I wanted to add there. I think we know this from our experience, you know, we can feel when there's resonance, we can feel that when our, it sounds a bit, it starts to get a bit too like new agey sounding, but like when our vibration is low, but meaning mm, when our heart mind is in pain, or in separation, or in anger. That's a felt experience. It's not just an idea. And it's not just felt by us. Other people feel it. Other people get the vibration. They, they you know, even if it's not um, through our words and our face and um, that kind of stuff, you can often feel where somebody's at. And we can be affected by each other. So this is why we like look to connect with people that are going to help um, remind us of joy or remind us that we're loved, remind us that we're cared for. Mm. Okay. So let's Let's practice. Uh, let's let's go into a practice now. Um, so mm, adjust your your space, your body, what supports you need, your lighting. Um. So you know maybe in in line with this, these thoughts, we might like to, you know, think about when you're practicing kind of setting a container that will cultivate your intentions. So some people chant at the beginning of their meditation practice or light a candle or have an altar. Um, you know, so these are things that might be supportive to you. And take your time as you're settling. You might like to, uh, any movement you need or touch or adjustments, try not to rush into it. And this going into our practice slowly helps to signal to this heart, mind, body that we're taking care. We're showing up with ourselves to take care of ourselves. The Buddha also often spoke about keeping wise company. And maybe that's partly for this, this reason. So as we settle in here, feeling that you are in the company of like-minded, like-hearted be beings, people. That we're all showing up here, whether it's later at the recording or here on the call, with intentions for cultivating kindness and wisdom, calm and responsiveness. And if you could allow yourself to receive that intention as a resonant vibration, how does the body receive that? Is there some softening, calming, settling that happens?
So we're just allowing time for the body to settle and arrive. And see if it's helpful to pay attention to the sensations of the ground and the support of the earth that are here for us. And from this place of a little more presence, begin to feel into how is your heart today? Is the heart protected? Is it aching? Is there ease or joy? However it is, nothing's wrong. We just want to meet ourselves where we are. Perhaps there's a sense of the relationships of maybe who you've been in contact with today or recently that may have had a resonant effect on your heart mind. So do this curiosity lightly, not Jumping into a story. Just a light curiosity. What's here? And maybe some sense of what's conditioned. How you are. And now, just trusting and intuiting what response, what's needed. So if there's a lot of ease and happiness, contentment, you might wish for yourself in your own words, oh, may this continue, or may I really open to this joy? May I... Allow myself to receive this and really know this that's here now. If there's kind of a walled off heart or protected heart, what do you intuit is needed as a response to that? May I be gentle? May I take care? Etc. So we offer some resonant somatic wishes with our own experience. What compassionate or joyful or caring response is needed? And we'll all continue this together for a few minutes of silence.
And then we'll begin to just gently transition out of this relating with ourselves and cultivating with ourselves. Take a few moments to feel the ground again, resting, just simple sensations of contact, touch, support. And then allow ourselves to just trust what arises from this connection to the aware heart. See who else arises in awareness. It may be someone close to you, could be someone not close to you, but there's kind of been some sticky interaction that has a residue, a resonance. It could be a group of people. Just see what first arises and then feel into what's your sense of what's needed in that resonant relationship for you to cultivate within your own heart. May I forgive myself or may your joy continue? May I be kind and gentle with myself in this interaction? Anything is possible here. Really trust what your inner wisdom knows. What do you want to cultivate in relationship to that person or group of persons or being, animal companion, etc.? Could be wishes for happiness, well being, ease of suffering. Expansion of joy in relationship with others. your mind gets caught in any stories or wandering off just gently come back we're we're tuning our tuning fork to resonate with skillful wishes and intentions You could continue either with yourself or with the, the next one that we were practicing with or op uh, invite in another connection, group or person or animal companion and see what's needed there.
And sometimes we use these words or phrases to help train the mind in the direction we're cultivating. But uh, some people really resonate with just being in that felt experience, this vibrational experience of intention. So you could check that out as well, this sense of this field all around the body. Through every cell of the body. And then we can return to connecting with ourselves, feel the ground. And kind of charge this field of intention within your being. May I be happy. May I be well. May I be safe, may I be peaceful. As if you're sitting in the center of this energetic field that's radiating from your heart and through and back, back into the heart. And from here, now we'll begin to open to even a felt sense, even if it's in our imagination or visualization or intention or a felt experience of all of us here practicing together, connecting our fields of intention. Understanding that all the way around this planet, there are people practicing these loving kindness practices right in this very moment. There may be people, I know there is, uh, sending, offering, wishing, cultivating loving kindness, joy, wisdom, and equanimity for us right now. even that we've never met and we offer the same. And this has been happening for thousands of years. The very air is charged with it. from this infinite boundless field of awake, aware, loving attention, we wish may all beings everywhere, ones that are known and unknown, near and far, friendly and unfriendly, 
born, not yet born. All beings. No discrimination in this field that is already present. May all beings everywhere cultivate skillful heart-mind. May all beings everywhere cultivate deep compassion and care. May all beings everywhere feel resonant, harmonic joy. And may that grow. You can just rest in that field or use phrases if that's helpful for you. As we hear these three vibrating sounds, feeling the resonance and the vibration extending in all directions, all beings. beings be touched by loving care. Mm. Now, so if you've joined us on the YouTube channel, I'll put a link below for that heart, heart math, heart Heart Math Center and, and their Heart Math Institute, pardon me, um, and their teachings I think are interesting and um, I hope it was 
a helpful practice for you. Okay. 